So welcome to what I'm planning are a series of, I'm calling these lectures, but uh, I hope they're quite interactive. And I'm going to ask you to do some kind of speaking and writing at different times. Hello, Wendy. Um, Hello. And we've We've got seven weeks. We've got seven Fridays before the Easter break, so I'll try to do seven different um, sessions, one hour every Friday. This first one um, focuses on understanding feedback and using feedback to improve your writing, because I think probably uh, a lot of students right now are facing their first assignments in semester B, and there's sometimes quite a gap between the last thing that you wrote in semester A and the first thing that you write in semester B. And um, I think this is a good opportunity to look back at what you did in your last assignments, what kind of feedback you received in your um, for your previous assignments, and how we can make sense of that in a way that will help us to improve our writing going forwards. Because if you're anything like me, there'll be part of you that when you receive feedback and it says anything negative, your first reaction is to say, that's not fair, <laughs> or they don't understand me, or um, yeah, I did do that, they just couldn't see it. So yeah, I can, I can be quite defensive about uh, feedback and I think it's quite human and normal to feel like that. But what we're gonna do today is try to look at feedback you may have received on assignments check that we understand it and how it relates to marking criteria. Um, and then at the end, we'll have some space for kind of making action plans of how to use that feedback for something really positive going forward. OK, now my starting point. Um, partly because you know, uh, I, I want to allow a little bit of extra time for for people to, to join late, but my um, my first task for you is actually I'm going to ask you about um, writing and, and for some of your thoughts on writing. Now, I know that a couple of you will have actually seen these questions before. I think uh, I know Wendy has definitely seen the questions before, for example. So if you've been in a session with me before where I've shown you these questions before, feel free to just ignore them and do something else or feel or equally feel free to answer the questions again. OK, so I've got these questions set up on Mentimeter. So you can either you can use the QR code that is currently on the screen. OK. Uh, I can, there's a couple of things I'm going to do. One thing is to send you a link. I've got someone at the door. Uh, and OK, so there's a link in the chat and you can follow that link. Or you can go to menti.com. You can go to menti.com. Sorry, a, a very nice visitor has come to the door. You can go to menti.com and use the code 29998711. Have you got a class? Nice to see you. Yeah. That doesn't happen very often. In, when I teach from home, the same thing doesn't happen. But OK, can you all see uh, the screen? Can you see my screen with yeah, statements yeah, on? Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. And can you access the uh, the kind of survey on Menti? Perfect. Thank you, Miriam. So there are five statements. Writing is a talent you either have or you don't have. There is one standard way of writing at university and so on. All I'd like you to do is to say whether you agree or disagree with these statements and you do it by sliding the the, the line um, 
to say which ones you agree with and which ones you disagree with. Does that work for you? Fantastic. Now, what I see right now are kind of live results of this. And if you look on the screen that I'm sharing with you right now, you can see uh, the statements that people are agreeing and disagreeing with. Earlier in, um, I think before everybody joined, I shared a link in, in the chat. There's a there's another link I've just shared, which will go to a Google document. So if you would rather just see these uh, these statements uh, kind of written on a blank document and have some time to think about them, you can do that. OK. Interesting. So there's there's more. A, there's more agreement about putting everything you know into an assignment than some of the others. OK, and I'm now going to ask you, um, I'm going to show you another five questions. OK, so we'll come back to those those statements in a moment, but I've now got five more statements for you. So. Again, can you just mark with each one whether you strongly agree or strongly disagree? And while you're doing that, I'm just going to set up couple of breakout rooms so you have a chance to speak to a couple of other people about your thoughts. Hi, Mark. Sorry, I'm a bit late. Yeah, no problem. So. All we've done so far is I, I did a little bit of a, an introduction and. Uh, if you go to. If you follow the links that are in the chat or just go to menti.com and enter the number you can see at the top of the screen, you can um, have a look at some statements about writing and tell us if you agree or disagree with them. Mariam, I see you have uh, your hand raised. Would you like to say anything? Yeah, I know about uh, uh, I know about this agree and disagree statement today. I uh, take a lecture for about the uh, it is possible to provide the uh, how to question the answer of evidence how to provide the evidence for any question or any statement how to start these and how to do that yeah so this it we, we will come we might have time for that later or it's something that we'll deal with in a future week so the focus of this workshop is we're, we're going to look at um, the way we receive feedback and what sense we make of feedback. Um, I can, uh, I'll make a note of your question because we already have quite a few things available for you to to look at in relation to evidence. But I would say that, um, yeah, evidence evidence starts with your your reading. It's it's not. We can later in the in the in the semester we can look at ways you you. Um, you show evidence in writing, but the first thing you need is evidence itself and you need to be able to evaluate it. But I'm going to send you all to um, breakout rooms now just so that you can speak to an, to each other for a couple of minutes. We can I can see like different answers that you've given in response to these five statements. I see that I think the, the statement that people agreed most with in the first five was putting as much of what you know into an assignment as possible. 
um, and there was most disagreement for the statement about um, what writing critically means. In the second five question, it looks like almost everyone agrees that good writers think, then write, check and hand in. Um, and perhaps the, the statement that people disagree with most is the one about um, not needing to explain things your tutor already knows. But I'm going to send you some to some breakout rooms now. You've got the 10 statements on the Google document that I will kind of share with you again. Um, and just for a couple of minutes, can you introduce yourself to one another, tell each other what you're studying? Um, and any of these statements that you would like to discuss in your group that you strongly uh, disagreed with, tell the rest of your group what you strongly disagreed with and why. But then after about two or three minutes, I'll, I'll, I'll call you back and we'll start moving on to talking about how this relates to feedback. OK, so I'm. I'm sending you to breakout rooms now. Now. couple of you who arrived a little bit later it's going to take me just just an extra minute to put you into a group okay so and Jana and Ambika okay to one I think Welcome back, everyone. Okay. Hello, welcome back. Hi, Damika. Hello. Hi. Hi. Has your delivery been yet? Uh, Don't worry. Uh, we could see the the list only now. We couldn't see the list earlier. OK, so um, yeah, the, you can't see my screen when you're in a breakout room. That's why I sent you the link to the Google document so that you could use that. But you can also see the, 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 yeah. the Mentimeter. Sorry. Um, OK, so my simple message here is that um, as some of you may know or have guessed, I'm presenting all of these statements as myths. So I don't agree with any of these statements. Um, and I'd like to be able to persuade you that all of these statements are things that in the future you can disagree with. A lot of people agreed with number three. Um, but the thing is, it's not about finding out everything about the topic. It's about finding a specific question and answering that specific question and choosing the most relevant um, uh, There was a question raised earlier about evidence. Well, when you're doing your reading, you find the most relevant points and data and evidence or whatever for your specific question. So it's not about finding out everything and putting everything into an, an assignment. It's about deciding what is the most relevant material for answering a question. A lot of people agree with uh, statement number 10, that good writers think, then write, check and hand in. But what I'd like to suggest, it's it's not just like a straight line. You don't first think and then write and then check. You do a lot of reading. You think about your reading. You do some writing. Then you do some more thinking. You might have to do some more reading. It's a it's a process that kind of keeps going around in circles before you before you hand in. And that's a perfectly normal thing to do. So, yeah, perhaps number 10 is not a bad advice, but it's um but it's maybe more complicated than that. Um, before I move on, does anyone want to start a fight with me? Does anyone want to tell me any of these statements are actually worth strongly agreeing with? Hello, Mark. <laughs> OK, uh, Juliana, yeah. do you have a question? Or All right, to say? I want you to explain further on uh, item seven. Mm -hmm. Say what you think or use I in a, an assignment. Well, 
we'll go into more depth in in a future um, session. Uh, there are plenty of people at this university who are asked to write reflections. It's really difficult to write a reflection without using I. Um, I know there's there's lots of people who give the advice never use I in academic writing, but the reason they do that, uh, many people do that, is because they want to discourage you from writing um, things like I think and just answering questions with opinions instead of positions about research. Um, it's not the word I itself that that's usually a problem. Max, uh, sorry to interrupt. Uh, hmm. I did my study skills assignment last semester uh -huh. um, with Anne, and it was a reflective report, mm -hmm. and she asked us to write it in, um, like, like writing as, uh, sorry, I. Yeah. She encouraged you to use I because it was a reflection, right? Reflect, yeah. 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 Oh. So, you know, that, that's that's the exception, like, isn't it? No, no, it's not a ref it's not a, a, an exception. I think it's just not a useful rule. <laughs> All right. Uh, and I would say whenever you see rules about academic writing, apply some critical thinking and don't necessarily trust. Yes, and Sunil, you're absolutely right. Of course, you have to write. You have to use the first person in a reflection. Yeah. That's why I'm saying number seven, we should strongly agree with it. And saying what we think, well, as long as we've done our research, then what we think is is uh, is important. Um, sorry, I don't know if it's pronounced OJ or OJ. You have your hand up. Yeah, yeah. What I wanted to ask is also in relation to what they have been saying concerning the use of I, mm -hmm. because uh, looking at number four, you're also saying something about writing critically, and then um, what is saying that if there's something negative or incorrect about something, I want you to explain that. And um, shouldn't you use I when you're critically, um, when you're critiquing a particular statement you've gotten in a journal? Uh, depends. Uh, you don't need to use I to critique anything because we can use reporting language. There's, there's various ways that we can, uh, we can write critically without using I. And in some subject areas, you don't often see people using I anyway. So um, this kind of relates to number two. There isn't one standard way of writing at university. Definitely not. There are many different ways of writing and some of them um, it might be appropriate to use I and some of them it might not be so appropriate. But it, you know, the question that it, it, it depends on the task and it depends on the on the context always. OK. Um, now from here, I know we, we've got these kind of I, I, I've started with this point because I think sometimes we we have some ideas about what we think is good and bad writing. And that might lead us to making some assumptions or even some guesses about why we get the grades that we get or the feedback that we get. These statements all um, come from uh, a book by uh, a lady called Jean Godfrey. It's a really simple book called uh, Writing for University. Uh, I'll share a link with it late to it later. Um, but elsewhere in that book, uh, she she shares some some data she's collected, right? So I hope you can see uh, this the the text on my screen. But if you can't, in the chat there's a there's a link to a Google document. Um, and if you go into the Google document, you, you'll be able to manipulate this and, and, and zoom in or whatever you need to do. So um, the, the, the statements in this table are collected from lecturers' feedback on student writing. So to me, these these statements look very, very familiar. I feel like I've seen these kind of statements written by other lecturers hundreds of times. Um, and you may rec you may look at some of these comments and think, yeah, I've I received a comment like that oh, on the yeah, okay. uh -huh. So you might recognize some of these statements from your own experience. But basically she she took 
this um, lecturer feedback and just divided the comments into comments on good work and comments on poor work. OK, so positive comments and negative comments. And she structured this table with numbers seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Now, I'm not going to ask Wendy <laughs> to, to answer my question because I hope Wendy might uh, remember me talking about this before. Um, but what I'll do, I'll, I'll give you a moment to look at this table. You might want to take a screenshot of it. Yeah, you could take a photo of it or you could open up the Google document so that you can refer to it. And then I'm going to send you back to your breakout room. And in your breakout room. Together. Can you suggest any ways in which the, the writer Jean Godfrey has organized this table? So why has she put some comments and called them number one? Why are some called number two? Why are some called number three and so on? and so on. OK, so. Why has why have the comments been organized in this table in this way? We can see some of them are good and some of them are bad. But why are some of them at the top and some of them are at the bottom? Um, let me send you back to your breakout room so you can speak to each other about this. Oh, Tell they're you. coming. Back. I see what you what you're saying. Interesting, this uh, room four, you come back first. I don't know why. <laughs> Welcome back. Welcome back, everyone. Welcome back and hello to the new faces that we've acquired. Um, does anyone feel like in their group they had a really good explanation for the organization of this table? You can just speak or you can raise your hand. Is it according to the dissenting out of the hard work that a student has given for his work? So, um, Ambika, thank you. Are, you. are you saying that the the different the different rows represent the amount of work that's required? The amount of hard work that a student has uh, shown in his or her work. OK, so like number seven is more work and number one is less work or the other way around? Uh, no, comparatively. OK, OK. No, so I, I could see how if you look at number one and number seven, definitely number seven might look like a more complex thing to do well than number one. But let's see what else we've got. Um, Juliana, or does what did what was the opinion of your your group? I I had an idea initially, like the uh, the first uh, speaker, but now I just got an idea that maybe uh, number seven is referring to the uh, seventh paragraph, and uh, the the tutor highlighted it, and that is the feedback. The OK, so it might be like number one is a comment made on the first paragraph, number two on the second paragraph and so on. Right, thought. <laughs> OK, OK, it's not that, but that's a nice thought. I've got uh, Sunil Kumar, you, you have your hand up. Yes, uh, Mark, um, what, what, what we discussed was that the number seven is um, more um, expecting from a student that what 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 the, what clarity he has and um, what um, um, the evaluating and synthesizing material. So it's a more complex, the seventh one. And I think the weightage of the mark is also depend on seven more rather than first to six. That's a really interesting idea. <laughs> <laughs> and and I'm, I like the fact that you um, together we're, we're thinking about the, the, the key things that might influence a grade, for example, like. Yeah. Obviously, there are a range of skills and activities involved in in create in producing an assignment. Some of them might be more challenging than others, and some of them will 
will will have a, a more significant weighting in the grading than others. You're absolutely right about to think about that, but that's not the reason. Miriam? For me, I think uh, there are steps from one to seven, because like uh, you could see first one uh, talks about the question and the last one talks about the conclusion and the overall um, essay. Yes, yes, yes. But um, to clarify, are, are we thinking about like, because I think Juliana said something similar, like from the beginning of the essay to the end of the essay, or, or are we talking about something else? Steps, as in like first step, second step, third step until seventh step. Yeah, it's exactly that. If we think about um, an assignment as a process, and there are multiple steps in that process. And the very first thing you need to do is read the question and understand the question. OK, and if you understand the question, that's the first step and it sets you in the right direction in terms of your thinking and your reading and your thinking about your reading. So that's why we've got that comment on, on the left, but the comment on the right has not clearly understood the assignment task. It's important to know that if we see a comment like that, it means the the problem with our assignment began a long time before we started rewriting it. It began with the way that we interpreted or didn't understand the question. So that's absolutely right, Miriam. Each each numbered uh, each numbered row is a stage in the assignment writing process. So first. You understand the question, then uh, you select uh, texts to read, then you kind of read and you have to understand and have a good a good command, so a good understanding of the literature you're reading and the ability to analyze that and then to cr think critically about it um, and bring everything together and draw and synthesize and, and, and draw appropriate conclusions in, in stages six and seven. Okay. Now the reason I want to draw this to to bring this to your attention is because in my experience often when I speak to students about the feedback they've received on some work they tend to focus on the feedback that is just about like the final stage of writing or they think that what that they if I look at some feedback with a student I and I say what what do you think was your biggest problem I'll often have students telling me oh it's my writing it's like my grammar is not good or my vocabulary wasn't good whereas actually the biggest issues with with an assignment might you know be the, the good or a bad assignment starts with interpretation of a question and the reading in relation to that and usually elements of um, writing like grammar and sentence structure are um, they might be the only thing that we can fix in the last 24 hours but they're often not not the biggest issues that we need to worry about okay now um, I have a question for you, which is that wh when we when we mark student work, we use marking criteria. And uh, Wendy will recognize this because I've just taken a screenshot of some marking criteria from uh, our master's degree in teaching English to speakers of other languages. But um, for your whatever degree you are on, um, you should have seen or you should have been given a handbook or some documents that show you the marking criteria. So that's the um, the elements of knowledge and understanding and skills that we are testing with every assignment and what it what you need to do in order to like get a 60 or to get a 70 and so on. So you might have this in your in a program handbook. You might be given it as a kind of separate document and you might see it on um, uh, on canvas when you are uh, looking at an assignment or after you have submitted assignment 
Um, can you just in the chat? In the chat, can you just type yes or no? If you have previously looked at the marking criteria that is used on your program. I just want to see how many yeses and how many noes we get. So I'll, requeat, I'll, I'll put my question in the chat as well, just to make sure. Have you seen marking criteria used? Probably everyone is saying yes. My second question, is it clear? OK, that's a really good response, Sunil Kumar. Like, uh, I'm completely with you because I think it's, you know, when I was a student, <laughs> I don't think there was any marking criteria. <laughs> Certainly nobody spoke to students about how they were being marked. Um, so I think it's a really good thing that now in in, in the 21st century, we we feel an obligation to show students in advance how we're going to mark their work. But I do agree that it's very difficult for this to have any real meaning until you've written your first assignment and you start to get feedback. Lovely. OK, so. When we get comments like this from our lecturers, it should be possible to link the comments to the grading criteria in the, in, in the marking criteria. OK, um, and if you haven't previously done that, please do take some time to to look at the marking criteria for an assignment and the feedback you've received from it and see if you can match the marking criteria uh, with with the comments, because that will help you get a sense of how important the different comments are. Um, yes, Miriam. <laughs> I mean, I say this as a marker and as someone who also has written marking criteria in the past. Sometimes when we're, we're trying to express the difference between 50 and 60, we might be saying something like good or very good or like satisfactory or good. And I do appreciate uh, that those words can look very similar. And it's and until until you start looking at other students work or somebody somebody else is writing, it's very diff difficult for anyone, including teachers sometimes to see the difference between. Um, uh, between um, one one mark and, and the next one up. Now. Let's um, let's hear from you. OK, so I, my next. I'm sorry. I've got some questions for you to think about. And then I'm going to close the. Um, I'm going to. Take down this slide and replace it with a Google document, and I'd like you to spend some time just writing um, responses to these questions. And you can choose what you want to focus on. Um, as I said, sometimes I speak to students about the feedback they've received from lecturers. And my understanding of that feedback is completely different to what the student has um, understood from it. So I'd like you to think about you know, either all of the feedback you've received so far or feedback from one specific assignment. And just think in terms of what you've received, what strengths and weaknesses do you think were highlighted in your work? And can you see how those strengths and weaknesses relate to the marking criteria? Now, question number one and two here. Um, I, if you would like to at any point to answer question number one by writing a little summary of the strengths and weaknesses that have been highlighted in feedback, if you want to share that with me in the Google document, or if you want to share it with me by sending me an email and then maybe attaching the feedback that it relates to, I'll be very happy to, to have a look at the way you've summarized and, and just compare with uh, my own thoughts on, on what it is you've you've received. But I'd particularly like to see answers from you on questions number three and four here, if you'd like to share. So. You might look at um, 
the the feedback you've received on a piece of writing and you think your weaknesses might be your use of English, um, your referencing conventions, and you haven't answered the question. So if quite quite possible that you've you identify those three weaknesses. But if you do identify those three weaknesses, I think it's important to think about which one is the most important out of those? Which of those will have the biggest impact on your grade? So if you do that exercise in your head, you can just write a response and share it with me in the Google document to say, these are my three weaknesses. Or, these are the three biggest weaknesses in my feedback. And this is the, the order of importance. Like this is the most important. This is the second and third. And the final question there, and I'd like, this is open to anyone. If you've received any feedback where you think, I just don't understand what this word means. <laughs> I don't know what critical evaluation is. Or they said that I didn't do that, but I have no idea what that means. The Google document is anonymous. So if you just um, answer that question and, sh and, and share with me any phrases or, or statements in feedback that simply simply you feel like it doesn't make sense to you, please share it with me and I can try to break it down for you in some way. OK. Um, this is the Google document. And so far I've given you the Google doc. There's, there's a link to it in the chat right now. So far I just, um, I shared this with you so that you could, you know, uh, look at the text that were on my slides and kind of make it bigger or smaller. But if you go down to the third page where it's got task three, I'm going to put some space in between the questions so that individually you can go in and write any answers you like, you would like to share straight into the Google document. And anything that comes up, I, I'll, I'll try to respond to. OK, yeah, um, feel free to carry on writing or um, I will keep an eye on this Google document. Um, so if. If you want to add something to it later, uh, I will check it in. I will check it again on Monday. And I'll if I can find the time on Monday, I'll also I, I could make a little uh, video summarizing some responses to things that that I find in the in the document, but it's uh, thank you very much for those of you who've been typing into the document. Congratulations on the strengths that have been identified. Um, I, I'm really interested in, in in something like this when uh, when you are trying to rank what might be the the kind of most which in terms of weaknesses, which one might be have a greater impact or, or, or on your on your overall grade, which one is more important? And I think, yeah, the, someone has written here. I think you're telling me that critical th critical writing is more important than sentence structure. And I would say absolutely. I think. Yeah, it's <laughs> serious problems with sentence structure can obviously make work very difficult to read and uh, sometimes ideas and arguments can get lost if the language is is too unclear. Um, but most readers can tell like, OK, you should have put a full stop there instead of a comma and I can still understand what you're saying. So. I, I think being able to write critically is worth more. In many ways than, than, than getting stru sentence structure perfect. I'm surprised to see you put sentence structure above referencing, but then referencing covers so many different things. So if you are referencing in a way that allows your reader to see what you read, uh, who the author was, where it was published, but you haven't followed the right conventions for your field. So for example, if your bibliography is not in alphabetical order, you know, that's potentially a problem with referencing, but it's not a huge problem compared to not writing critically. Um, whereas a student who 
who's referencing is unclear and we can't see what they've read or what they haven't read, we can't see what they're referring to, or a student who hasn't referenced enough, that's potentially a much bigger problem than sentence structure or critical writing. So it very much depends. Um, I wonder what you think. Uh, someone wrote here. These weak, um, weaknesses, insufficient structure and logic, insufficient knowledge and understanding and limited integration. I wonder. Does anyone have a feeling of, of those three things? What might be the most important in an assignment? Or what might be the biggest problem? Between insufficient structure and logic, insufficient knowledge and understanding, or limited integration? Would anyone like to suggest which of these is most important? Hillary says knowledge. And yes, Hillary, I absolutely agree with you that um, if someone is good at argumentation and they're good at referencing, for example, or they, they can write stylishly, that doesn't mean anything if if they don't actually have knowledge of their subject. So I think if if you've got feedback that highlights some problems with knowledge, then that will probably have a very significant impact on your grade. Uh, so I think sometimes that can be quite confusing for students. They'll be like, oh, I have this feedback telling me that I can write well, my referencing is good, but like my, um, but there are problems of, of with my knowledge and understanding, and I don't understand why my mark is so low. I'd say you know, problems with knowledge and, and understanding would, would, would get you right down very low in, in, in some marking criteria. So yeah, so I think you know. Point I I I'm trying to make today is that not everything that you'll have different strengths and weaknesses, but strengths and weaknesses aren't all equal. Um, and if we receive feedback that's related to a mistake we made early on in the the assignment writing process, like we misunderstood a um, a question or we didn't understand the, the the text that we read in preparation for the assignment then that is likely to have a a, a much bigger impact on the, on the uh, on the assignment and on the grade than on you know what what we might do in in the final stages of an assignment um i've got some in relation to the final question is there anything in the feedback you don't do not understand um I've got a couple of future sessions planned, which I think will um, relate to this. So in, yeah, what does in-depth writing mean? I think I'm going to try to address that in the next few weeks and certainly using evidence or being evidence-based. I'll try to address that in the next few weeks in terms of what that means. Um, <laughs> this final com comment here, was told there were formatting errors in the essay. I mean, it looks like there's formatting errors in that sentence as well. Um, so if you don't, if you've got a statement like that, there were formatting errors and you don't know what the what those formatting errors were, it's a, you know, you can go back to the person who marked your work and just say, sorry, can you explain what that means? And if those people aren't available, then um, there are members of my team from the Centre for Academic English in the Learning Resource Centres. We've, we've got someone on campus on one of the campuses every day in Learning Resource Centres. Um, so sorry, Sunil Kumar, I'll, I'll come back to you in, in, in a moment with your question. So if you've got something like that, there's a problem with formatting and you don't know what it is, you are free to ask. You are, you are you know, um, because it's, it's hard for me to make any kind of judgment unless I can see that formatting as well. OK. Um, before I come to Sunil Kumar's uh, question, because uh, I'll, I'll need to go quite soon. Oh, brilliant. Someone has already started <laughs> to answer task four, but this is a kind of a piece of reflection for you to do over, you know, when, when you get the chance. Um, and I will monitor the document and I will respond to what I see in task four. Now, if there's one thing I'd like you to take away from this session, it's 
any feedback you've received is now a tool for you. It's there to help you to produce better writing in the future. But I appreciate that it's not always easy to turn a piece of advice or a comment into an action plan. So what I'd like you to do and what you can, what I'm inviting you to share with me is take one of the weaknesses or all of the weaknesses that are, have been highlighted in your feedback and just see if you can write into the Google document like, like this example. So my example is this. The feedback told me that I needed to check my work for errors in language and formatting. OK, so I had I had mistakes with like grammar, vocabulary and formatting. But I know that I I handed in work with those mistakes because I didn't give myself enough time to check. So for my next assignment, I'm going to aim to finish the work three days before the deadline so that I can devote at least one of those three days to checking and editing and making sure I don't submit some work that's that's not correctly formatted. So I've gone from the problem to the reason for the problem and addressing the reason for the problem. Um, and if if you want to write your kind of action plans, very short action plans into this document, I will have a look. If I think it it's logical and sensible, I'll make a comment like, yes, this looks like a good idea. If I see any kind of problem or I think you need to be more specific, I'll make a comment and tell you that too. OK. Um, 